Hello, I'm Julia Edgar. I'm a senior lecturer in the Institute of Infection, Immunity and Inflammation at the University of Glasgow. I'm Freddy Grünfelden, a vet neurologist, and work we will describe here was done in Julia's lab while I was a PhD student at the University of Glasgow. This work is entitled Neural Stem Cells Restore Myelin in a Demyelinating Model of Pelizaeus Merchbacher Disease. During development, neonatal oligodendrocyte precursor cells, or OPCs, form myelin. In the central nervous system, most axons are eventually myelinated. Should demyelination ensue for whatever reason, the brain's macrophages clear the myelin debris, and this paves the way for adult oligodendrocyte precursor cells to restore myelin. Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease, which is the subject of this manuscript, is due to mutation in the proteolipid protein 1 gene. There's currently no treatment for Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease, which spans a broad clinical spectrum, dependent to a large extent on the amount of myelin that is made and or maintained. The same is true in animals that harbour mutations in the same gene. In our manuscript, we first describe the clinical, histological and biochemical changes in the central nervous system of two individuals with classical Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease due to duplication of the proteolipid protein 1 gene. Despite that our patient survived into late middle age, they nonetheless experienced severe neurological symptoms. Direct transplantation of neural stem cells has undergone safety trials in four patients with conatal forms of Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease in which virtually no endogenous myelin is present. We therefore asked whether neural stem cell transplantation might also be helpful for classical forms of Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease, bearing in mind that the transplanted cells would have to compete for axon coverage with the endogenous cells that are capable of forming myelin. In the equivalent PLP transgenic mouse model, the axons are similarly myelinated at postnatal day 40. Then demyelination gradually started to develop, which resulted in a virtually complete demyelination of axons at postnatal day 120. Using immunohistochemistry for myelin basic protein, we were able to confirm that myelin forms during development and subsequently degrades. To summarise, our extensive analysis of both patients and the equivalent mouse model showed a complex pathology characterised by both dis and demyelination as well as axon changes. At least in the animal model, neuroinflammation was also present. As Julia mentioned in the introduction, remyelination is a default response after demyelination. So why does remyelination fail in this model of Pelizaeus Metzbacher disease? To further probe properties of PLP transgenic OPCs, we turned to cell culture, co-culturing the mutant neonatal or adult OPCs alongside the wild-type counterparts for up to six days. We then measured process extension and found, as in vivo, the transgenic neonatal OPCs behaved similarly to their wild-type counterparts. In contrast, neither adult transgenic or wild-type OPCs attained outgrowth comparable to their neonatal counterparts. These observations have important implications for the likelihood of success of cell transplantation. To test the therapeutic potential, we transplanted lag set expressing neurospheres into newborn transgenic mice. Following in transplantation of neurospheres, we were able to show that they integrated and extensively myelinated the transgenic mouse over time. Finally, we asked if transplantation could reduce neuroinflammation. Taking macrophages as a surrogate marker, we were able to show 
a significantly reduced number of these cells in the transplanted animals compared to the non-transplanted controls. In summary, we showed that in a mouse model of classical Pelizaeus Merchbacher disease, wild type neural precursor derived OPCs can form and maintain stable myelin out competing mutant cells for axon coverage. Finally, we would like to acknowledge our funders, our collaborators at the University of Glasgow, at the Max Planck Institute for Experimental Medicine in Göttingen, at the University of Leipzig, and we especially remember Jim Garburn, Wayne State University, and thank the family of our patients.